Last week we looked at how to create 2D elevations using our lines, polylines, and a fill tool. And so this is what we're trying to create. This was the effect that we're after. And we see this is all just done in 2D because we're just at the moment using our 2D projection skills rather than a 3D modeling to be able to create this. Now, one thing that I did, um, which I didn't record as a video, is in a different class we looked at how to create a brick plan, a floor plan. So I looked at uh, a floor plan to brick dimensions. Now this was just done by creating a, a grid, a matrix of bricks. This looks rather messy and rather complicated, but all it is is one line multiplied. And when we measure that out, we see that it's 110 and then 10 and then 110 and repeated and the same way. So in the X and Y axis. And what that's doing is in a floor plan arrangement, creating a, a brick chart or a brick layout. So we could set our entire building out to do that. Now that's not really hard to do. So I'm going to show you again just how we created that. We just start with one line. I could align that to my origin. So that's 0, 0. And now I'm going to drag a copy of that 110 and drag another copy of that 10 millimeters. Now when I zoom in, these are the two lines I want to select and use the multiply tool. So that's edit, move, multiply. Now to multiply, we want to untick. This is a new option in 21. We just don't need it at the moment. Uh, we want to spread by an increment and the spacing of what we want is 120. We could do this in a lot of different ways but this is going to be the easiest way for us right now. I'm going to click on the original point and I'm just going to move across and, and make sure that we create some multiples of those. Now we could create a lot, it doesn't necessarily matter at this moment how many there are. All that's important is when we go back to our floor plan and then we turn on that brick touch uh, brick chart that it's bigger this brick chart is bigger than the building that we're using that's all that we need at the moment so back to the brick chart we just need to have that in both axes so I'll select some of these I don't need to select all of it necessarily and the easiest way is just to go mirror a copy now I'm going to mirror a copy from this original point and I'm going to choose 45 degrees hold shift to make sure it stays straight and that's going to allow me to have again that brick chart going in both directions. Now when I go back to my floor plan I want to overlay or trace reference, drag that reference over to the corner of my building. Click on the corner, click on the corner. Now if we were to do this and find out that the bricks didn't line up with any of these intersections then we know that our design hasn't worked very well. So thankfully there's a few here that aren't quite right, so I can fix those now. So if there was something that was wrong, I could either move all of these lines and fills, or I could use a stretch tool. So I can use my marquee. Now because I'm in a worksheet, we see that we don't have the option for a solid marquee. It's only a thin marquee, which is fine. We want to make sure that we've got our grouping suspended, because we can't stretch something properly when it's grouped and then we want to go edit, reshape, stretch. Now what reshape stretch is doing is it's defining along a break line, so along this line and along this line. I'm choosing a reference point here and I'm going to either make that shorter or longer. In this case I'll, I'll make the garage opening wider. Again just holding shift to make sure it's aligned and we see that it's stretched all of those and if we look this way, it hasn't moved anything else. Now, how exact do we want to get? The plan that I was using to trace this off was really horrible in terms of its accuracy, and so in some cases we're just a millimeter or so off, but it's still not quite right. So we can even fix those up. Same sort of idea, stretch over where we want to go. Make sure that if we're stretching vertically, so up the page, we want to make sure that wherever we're connecting to can also stretch vertically without creating an error. So that's edit, reshape, stretch and I need to zoom right into this one click click 
zoom out. Double click to get rid of that marquee. Now I can do this as much or as little as I needed to. Uh, what did I have on this side? Let's try to mirror it. We've got two half bricks or one full brick or squares, two squares. Edit, reshape, stretch. Now if you worked in architecture or building design before, maybe architectural drafting, detailed drafting, you'd know that drawing two brick sizes is, in, is incredibly important. Um, and it's something that doesn't get done enough. Uh, it's also something that is hard to figure out sometimes. It takes a lot of work to analyze and understand what we're doing with it. So again, often it doesn't get done until too late. This is one way that we can use Archicad uh, in order to be able to make, make this process faster for us. Now, again, this is 2D. It's not how we normally work in Archicad. So I could do the same thing with walls, but right now I've got fills and lines. When we've got an intersection like this, this becomes harder. Because if I want to stretch this one here, it's supposed to be a double brick, but we see it's not quite. So what happens if I do this? If I stretch this edge, and it would mean that this is going backwards, let's see what happens when I do this. So the element that I wanted to stretch worked fine, but this is a little bit silly here now. So what do I need to do? It's hard to fix when we start to invert things that shouldn't be like that. What we really need to do is to extend this back to a line. So ideally, if this was a brick building, and I'm just going to drag these individually, I'd be extending this back so it would align here. Now, do I have an extra line here? Yeah, there it is. So we'll just intersect these. We can just trim that and then we see that we've cleaned up that edge. So I'm not going to go all the way around this building to do this, but you can see the idea. So we can, this is a much simpler situation. Stretch, edit, reshape, stretch. And after the fact, we can stretch and resize so that we're allowing our building to be built to full bricks or half bricks, but no silly percentages of bricks. Now this will be very important later when we come to dimensioning. I'm going to stop now and then in a later video we're going to have a look at how to dimension or use the dimension tool and use the active dimension tool. And so we'll dimension it and we'll see that we end up with some strange numbers and then we'll still be able to use the stretch tool with those dimensions showing to be able to fix up the rest of the building. We're going to leave that now. We'll come back to that later uh, and we'll look at today's exercise. In the elevations, we see that um, I've got two elevations. We did the east and the west elevation. Again, it's all fills. I did this other one here based on this other size, uh, basically just a replication of this one. Just delete that for now. And what we now need to do is to create the other directions, so the north and the south elevation. So to do this, just like before, we're going to rotate our reference, or in this case, we could reef set to default position because it was originally in a landscape orientation and then we're going to drag the reference to the side. Now it doesn't really matter which way we stretch this uh, and just for now we'll start putting some lines, we'll do the uh, construction lines in red. So I'll just extend some of these lines across so we've got a ground plane, a ridge, I'll just do the high side maybe at the moment. Of course we can do the other one in the other direction. And of course we can start to extend these lines through as well. Now we're not doing a section through, we're just doing an elevation. So therefore we can just cut. Now I can just draw individual lines or I can drag a copy. It's not going to make much difference in terms of 
its speed for now. Now let's do that multiply or drag multiple copy. Move, drag multiple copies, and then I'll just choose the rest of my openings. Even as I'm doing this, I'm seeing there's a lot of extra work that we're going to need to do to fix up some of the problems we've already got, but that's fine. We can come back to that later. So we've extended those references. We can leave this for now um, so we can come back to it later and adjust it. We need to get our reference. So that's the end of this video. And in the next one, we'll be looking at how to bring in a reference from PDF again for the other elevations and how we can start setting this up just like we've done in the previous videos.